All right, today we're going to be talking about the Cinepure CF100. This is by Ziyun. This is an RGB tube light. It's got the color temperature controls. It's got a bunch of effects presets on this light programmed in, and it's 100 watt of power, which is quite a bit for a tube light, small little form factor like this. So I set up a couple shots using this light as the main key light source for my shots. And uh, let's take a look at how I lit everything. Okay, starting with the first one, I have a, a simple little kitchen scenario where I am sitting around uh, waiting for water to boil, I guess is what it is in the background there. I have my coffee machine on, making some tea maybe. In this kitchen shot, I have under the kitchen cabinets here, I have a couple of different tube lights that I've set up uh, in the background. So one right here in the right corner, and then you can see another one behind my head there on the left side. And that's just to give the background some sort of ambient light, some little points of interest for the eyes to look at. And then I actually have a different light entirely set up on a C stand. I needed something to lift up the shadows uh, in the background because the cabinets, since they're dark already, and I shot it at nighttime. Those cabinets will really like sink into the shadows. So I didn't want that. I wanted to be able to see some sort of detail in the background. So I set up a light on a C stand uh, and I blasted it at like, I think it was like 100% brightness. Let me check. Never mind. It's at 8% brightness because um, it's a 300 watt light. I didn't want it to be too bright since it is uh, nighttime. I didn't want it to be overpowering the main focus, which is me in the foreground. So I wanted a little bit, only a little bit of light just to bring up the shadow information in the room. So from the angle that I'm sitting at, the 300 watt light that's off to my right side is going to push a lot of light onto my face, which I didn't want. So I used that black cloth to essentially just flag out a huge part of that light hitting my body and my face and just sort of hitting the camera in general. And that kept a lot of the darkness of that nighttime feel. And then for the key light that I'm using, it's gonna be the CF100 that is right in front of my face. I set it up on a boom arm so that it's higher up and it's also horizontal. And so I mounted that on a quarter inch ball mount converter thing uh, to the junior pin on the boom arm. And this is what's cool about the light is that you can actually mount it with the uh, quarter inch thread at the bottom. So any accessory that you can attach using the quarter inch, it will accept. And I have it with the soft box. This is the little cloth diffusion thing that it comes with in the box. And you put it over the barn doors right here. Uh, barn doors are also included into the whole package, which is really nice. And then you have this whole like nice softbox, like the one I'm using for my key light right here, which is really nice. I also added another layer of diffusion because I wanted the source of light to be a little bit bigger. So I used another layer of diffusion to spread out the size of the light so that it's not as specular. The source of light doesn't look as like hard or harsh onto my face. And yeah, I think it looks pretty nice for the key light. That one was set to 3,800 Kelvin and it is set to about 65% power. And then I also had the second uh, CF100 off to my side. This is actually mounted on a tripod because I don't have any more of those uh, light stands that have the um, quarter inch uh, mount. Again, this one has the soft box on top of the barn doors so that I don't have a super hard uh, light. And this light was supposed to be a backlight just to be motivated by the kitchen light that's off to my left side there. And that one is just to give a little bit of separation uh, on the back of my head. That one's set at 3,900 Kelvin and at 4% power. The cool thing about these lights is that it charges via USB-C or you can use like a DC adapter um, plug as well. But being able to charge it on USB-C and also be using it to shoot at the same time is really cool. So you see here I have it plugged into the outlet uh, on my kitchen island and I'm running it as I'm charging it. Moving on to the next shot, I have a shot of me in my office and I am making sure I have all the gear that I need for a shoot. The point of this was to show how I can use a CF100 using the HSI, the color picker mode to dial in a very specific color that I want. And so here in this shot, my key light is gonna be motivated. I love motivated light. And so using the neon sign that I have off to, I guess my right side, but the camera left, using that as like the motivation to push in a very warm color that I picked off of the HSI controls on the back of the light. And that one I dialed it in to be exactly the same hue and saturation and intensity as the uh, neon sign. And then I'm putting that tube light very close to the bookshelf that I have just so that I can create as much shadow as possible on the side of my face that's facing the camera. So that gives you the most amount of contrast, which is what I'm going for in this shot right here. And I also have my second CF100 
off in the background right here, sitting on top of my cabinet where I keep all my gear. That one is just sitting there. And again, giving me a little bit of edge light on the back, just like a hint. I don't want too much because it would look a little bit unnatural if there's like a weird source of light coming in or like huge bright source of light coming in and hitting the back of my head right there. So that one, I believe I set it to 5,700 Kelvin, which is a lot cooler than the orange warm light that's coming in from the key light. Uh, just to give a little bit of uh, color separation and color contrast there. The teal and orange uh, is really nice and pleasing to look at. So a very subtle push to the back of my head to act as a edge light. And again, going for that nighttime scene, it's actually shot during the daytime, but I have <laughs> the windows blocked out and you can see that little bit of leak of sunlight through you know the background and stuff like that. And that's giving me uh, a lot of ambient, which is great because I don't need it to be completely dark. I do want a little bit of ambient around the room. And then just using these two tube lights, I can just easily manipulate how I want the scene to look because I can just set the key light and also give a little bit edge light without affecting the overall mood of the whole shot. All right, and the last thing that I wanna talk about is the preset effects that are built into the light itself. You can just easily switch and see what sort of effects there are in the light, uh, and what works for whatever scene that you're trying to shoot. Um, this is great because in this example right here, I am at night again. This is a common theme throughout the three shots, playing that new Call of Duty uh, beta that just dropped for Black Ops 6, which I am pretty excited about. I love Black Ops 6, but that's beside the point. So here I have a, a tube light that is set again horizontally. I don't like the, the vertical feel of the look of a tube light because the tube light's already very skinny. And if I want to emulate like a TV screen effect, I'm going to have it actually horizontal so that because a TV screen is also horizontal so that I don't get like a weird, uh, I don't know, eye light or anything like that. Um, it just looks and feels a little bit more natural that way. And then once I had the light horizontal, I just set it to preset number five at 100% intensity with the softbox on. Uh, I think preset number five gives me like the best TV recreation, like the game going on in the background with all the rainbow effects, the green, the purple, the weird colors and stuff like that. I think it actually works. Um, you could also, it could also be like a, a movie that I'm watching. It doesn't have to be like a video game that I'm playing, but the amount of flashing, the changing of the colors that's on my face really, I think helps sell the effect of like, oh, I'm actually playing a video game. And then just to give me a little bit of lift in the shadow, because I think my face was a little bit too dark, I added in the second CF100 to give me a little bit of uh, ambient lift. So I set that one to 6,500 to keep the light very cool. And then because it was so close to my face, I'm setting it to 2% brightness so that it doesn't completely overpower or wash out that preset effect uh, from the first CF100. And for that one, I didn't really mind if it was vertical or not. And a couple other details really quickly is that there's a one tap to max on the back, which takes it from whatever percentage you were at to its full potential, which is 100 watts. So if I just click and hold, yeah, that's right there. So that's like 100% brightness using just one button, uh, which is really useful. So battery life is actually surprisingly really good. At 50% brightness, if you're just holding that the entire time, you get a couple hours of usage out of the full charge, which is really nice. Battery life, you don't have to worry about unless you're blasting it at 100% max wattage. And in that max mode, obviously it's gonna drain the battery a little bit faster. Another cool thing about the CF100 is that it's got this Dynavort cooling system on the back. It's just a bunch of little fans on the back of the light to make sure that the light never overheats, never gets hot to touch, which you know never happened for me because uh, one, I'm not using it at the max, but even if you were using it at the max, this light would never get hot. Okay. I was editing a video and I forgot to turn this light off. I think it's still on. Yeah, it's still on. Okay, so these are the, the fans in action right now. You can hear them like going into turbo mode because like it's hot in this room. I'm, I'm filming a bunch of lights on and stuff like that. And this is what it sounds like. And that's what it does when it gets too hot. And touch the fan. Okay, yeah, it's blowing a ton of air out. And this light is not hot at all. Like, it's not hot at all. It's set at 21%, so it's not like super bright. It's like, oh, and it's off. And that was it. Okay, cool. So it just like automatically comes on, blows air out, and then cools the whole light. And then whenever it deems that it's good to go, it just shuts off by itself. Now, my final verdict on this light. Is this a light that I can see myself using on set? 
Uh, probably not. The only big thing that it's really missing is the, uh, there's no Wi-Fi or Bluetooth connection. There's no app that this uses to connect to your phone. So for those situations where you have the light mounted up higher, or it's kind of like an inaccessible place after you mount it on a C stand or something, you can't, it's, it's harder to control the light if you need to, if you need to make any adjustments to it. You have to bring the light down, adjust it, put it back up, and then see how the shot looks, how the light looks. So for that reason, that reason alone, it wouldn't be the best choice. It wouldn't be my first choice uh, to bring on set. I would use uh, other lights that have the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi connectivity. Um, these lights are great for studio settings where you are doing studio photography or videography, you're doing product photography or videography, and you can set the light up where you can still adjust it by hand. Otherwise on like an actual film production or a commercial film production, these lights wouldn't be, you know, the best suited for those uh, quick moving productions. But overall, these are great lights. Love them. They're super accurate. They're super fun to use because of the RGB aspect of it and the effects are really nice. All right, that's it for this video. Check out the Cinepure CF100 from Zhuying. I will leave links down below in the description. If you like this video, hit the like button and then subscribe because it really helps my channel. Uh, until the next one, my name is Alex Chung and I'll see you later. Bye.